This Mass is being celebrated for the intention of, or the special intention of the pre-deacons, Danielle, Wayne, and Victor, and for the repose of the soul of Giuseppina Dizio and Peter Fly Wynn. Please silence your cell phones before the liturgy begins. A second collection for the 2022 Annual Catholic Appeal will immediately follow our regular collection. And before we begin, we ask all new parishioners and those visiting our parish to please stand so we can welcome you with some applause. see any today, maybe next week. Now let us all stand and greet those around you. If possible, present yourself by giving your name. The St. Michael prayer can be found in the virtual worship aid. If you would like to pray along, you can scan the QR code on the chair in front of you. So let us pray together the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now please remain standing and let us take a moment to center our hearts and minds in sacred silence.
morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, morning. Welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday of Lent. Today we will hear about the mercy and the compassion, the patience of our God. And we should not take advantage of that or take it for granted, but we need to present ourselves to this mercy of God and benefit from the patience of God. With a spirit of repentance, let's begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, to be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done. prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. We look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 
Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out to that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? And God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want to I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom <clears throat> the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing, is standing secure, should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> suffered in this way, that they were greater sinners than all the other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Are those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than anyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now, I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but I found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to invite all of us to listen and join the choir this refrain of our 
our son today with the sense of the meditation of today. You may be remain seated, but let us join the choir. and sisters, today we are in the third Sunday of Lent, and we are given these remarkable readings. We know that Lent is the time of, to reconnect with the Lord and to reconnect with the, our brothers and sisters. Christ knows us better than we could ever know ourselves. We are God's children and the creation. Very often Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life isn't defined or defined in things, but life is found in God. We have heard from the first reading about God revealing himself to Moses, and Moses receives a call to help God to liberate the people in Egypt, the suffering people, the tortured people, the oppressed people. However, the way he reveals himself to Moses is strange. It is through a burning bush. And Moses, having the time to graze the animals, could disregard this burning bush. As we know, once the fire devoured the grass of the forest, or even the accidents in our houses, it consumes everything. But in this bush, to his wonder, it was not being consumed. So he was interested to go across, close to it and to see what is happening. It is there that the Lord calls him and tells him, hey, this is a holy ground. You better remove your sandals. Wherever God is, is a holy ground. And God reveals himself by introducing himself to him, saying, I am who am. All that does, does it to me. Means God is a presence. God is existence, and he 
tells him to remember the connections that he has with his ancestors, beginning with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is not a new God. It is the same God. God saw and he heard the cry, the suffering of the people in Egypt and wanted somebody to help him to liberate them. He chooses Moses to go and liberate this people from Egypt to stop such atrocious situation. Could it be started with a political arena, social arena, that it will lead also to the prime spiritual growth. Moses already prefigures the work of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, to liberate us from the slavery of sin. Already we have begun that journey to move from the slavery of sin to the promised land. But we should not forget that the Egypt of today, where there is suffering, where there is torture, where there is oppression, is still there. And God wants you and me to help him to do something. We are his legs, we are his eyes, we are his hands, we are his ears to listen to the cry that goes on in this world. The call of Moses did not choose a special place. It was just there in the wilderness where he was raising the animals. That is to say, God can appear to you anywhere, in your house, in your field, in your workplace, in the church, wherever. But what he wants us to recognize is not to take it for granted, to have a sense of wonder, a sense of, oh, awesome. And only in that we can hear more and more the identity of God. I am who I am. I am the presence. I am the I existence. When our hearts are full of God, we can holy. When our house is filled with the God, it becomes a holy ground. When here, sometimes we come to pray here, we may not wonder so much about the presence of God in this place, but wonder the good air that we breathe, and the coolness that we enjoy. We forget the presence of God in our midst. However, God wants us to pay attention to His I am who I am. Listen to Him because He has something to tell us, because He wants us to collaborate in His ministry. We are walking from Egypt to the Promised Land. Today is the third Sunday. It's like you are making a stop to reflect and to meditate. Where are we? Already two weeks have passed and we are on the third week. How is our journey towards the Promised Land? Are we profiting from this journey? or still we need more graces.
The gas globe is in line with this mission that Jesus came not to destroy but to save. We heard about the owner of the orchard, the fig tree, and the garden. God is the owner of the orchard. You and me are the fig tree planted in God's orchard. Jesus is the garden. He always pleads for us before God and God listens. He asks for more time for you and me in order to bear fruit. From the time of baptism, we were planted in the altar of the church and in his word. God expects us to bear fruit through our lives, through our works, and even through our attitude and sentiments. Jesus corrected the sentiments and the attitude of those people who went to him and asked him whether the people who died were sinners. It was the mentality of the time. Sickness, death is a result of sin. But Jesus corrects that. It's not so. And by giving this parable, he wants to say, God is merciful, God is compassionate, God is patient. How do we profit from this patience, love, and compassion of God? As we go forward in this journey, every day should be an opportunity to think of this pleading of Jesus for you and me. This is the time for all of us to respond some time, scrutinize our life, our life. Lent is a time of fasting, prayer, and recon reconciling ourselves with God. So often we lie to ourselves and to each other. We don't want to look into that mirror and see our shortcomings. I also don't. At the first glance, everything is just fine. But looking a little closer, I see how I really look. Just as the owner of the orchard, we are looking for something good. We are looking for good fruit so that we may present to God. We live in a real and a spiritual desert where we should not allow it to be barren. Brothers and sisters, we are looking for something that will quench our thirst and our hunger. Lenten season is a time to take advantage of the sacraments of reconciliation to cleanse ourselves of our sins and make ourselves clean. Like the fig tree, which had failed so many times to produce fruit, we too can start a new um, venture. God is always there waiting for us to hand to him the products of the gift of life he has given to us. But at the same time, he sent Jesus to help us to recognize the way to him, to recognize his mercy, to recognize his patience. Let us not tempt God by misusing his patience. Because Jesus 
always talks to God, Daddy. Let us wait. Let us wait for this person. Let us give time. He will change. She will change. And Jesus, as the gardener, wants to dig around us and give fertilizer, the Eucharist, the scripture, and the sacrament that he has given to us. Those are the nutrients that he helps us to bear fruits. So dear brothers and sisters, today let us come with a sense of how awesome wonder here in this sanctuary. To look at Jesus, to look at God and say, yes, God is, I am who I am. He is here with us. He is existing and making us to exist. Let us pray for those who are suffering so that they may get a true liberator. And the true liberator is Jesus who can give the peace that this world cannot give. He is a peacemaker. We all need to imitate him. And as we look at our world, with all the suffering that it goes on, we turn to Jesus, the good gardener. And this gardener will turn to God to ask for a little while so that we can listen to his voice. Amen. Amen. The Lord is merciful. That's a repeat of the Lord is merciful, God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, from God from God, to God from true God, begotten God from Amen, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was in the heart of the living and the living and the living. For our sake, he was supposed to die as a man of the Bible. He suffered by the heaven when he was around, and he was with him on the third day in the court of his churches. He has ascended into heaven and has seated at the right hand of the Lord. He will come in the name of the Lord and to die in the name of the Lord. And he is in the name of the Lord and in the name of the Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Holy Spirit of God. He will proceed from the Father and the Son. The way of the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God. He will stop in the two of our hearts. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit. I confess one happens in the for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and I have the reward to come. Amen. Amen. Calling upon our loving Father, let us lift up our needs and those of the world. For the church, May God's love and mercy be abundant upon her. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of Ukraine who are suffering so grievously in the pain and injustice of endangerment and war, that the Lord stand with them at this moment and restore to them freedom and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those whose hearts are burdened by sin and who struggle to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the Lord's teaching shape our lives and His grace conform us to His heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For the homebound and the sick. For Michelle Depias, Chris Gonzalez, Dennis Easterling, Andres Velasquez Flores, Tom McGilliard, Juventino de la Torre, Jesus Gonzalez Sr., Benicio Rodriguez and Mario Malgosa, and for their caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our faithful departed, for Rosemary A. Watson, Martin Rivera, Jose Wilbur Rodas Cruz and Ignacio Langarica. May they rest forever in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the special intention of the pre-deacons, Daniel, Wayne, and Victor. For the repose of the soul of Giuseppina, Dizio, and Peter Y. Wynn. Let us pray to the Lord. For those intentions written in our book of petitions and for those intentions we carry in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, receive the prayers that we lift up to you today. We ask you this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all sing together a song for the gifts. Remember your love.
Jesus, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of his holy church. Be pleased, dear Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and it grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is in truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord and Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink. He had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the God and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered the willing into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and you drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of the mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection. 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Come, we pray, that the partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, brother, our bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and they all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Francis of Assis and St. Clair, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit you to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> same God, with the same Father that Jesus introduced him to us, with the same faith, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, and peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord. Be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another now a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called into the supper of the Lamb. Let us all sing together the song for communion. How lovely is your dwelling.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and they are nourished while they still on earth, with the bread that comes from on a high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we listen to some announcements. If our uh, guest speaker is still here, if you can please come forward. This message is from our pastor in regards to mask usage. Masks are optional for those who are attending Mass. We recommend those who are not vaccinated to please continue using your mask while gathering indoors. Next weekend, March 26th and 27th, has been designated for the 2022 Annual Linton Collection. Special envelopes will be available for the collection, which supports the works of Catholic Relief Services, the Church in Africa, and the Church in Latin America. Please prepare to respond generously to this worthwhile collection. St. Francis invites you to the Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent. It will take place in the church at 6 p.m. in English and 8 p.m. in Spanish. Please know the Stations of the Cross are for people of all ages and everyone is welcome. Please join us for fish and fries. The Knights of Columbus will be hosting from 6 to 8 p.m. every Friday during Lent. Please be sure to take home a copy of the bulletin or visit our parish website at St. Francis of Assisi Vista for more information regarding the announcements just made and activities at our parish. Now we want to hear from Joanne from 40 Days for Life. It's so good to be here. I know some of you are freezing. I'm going to keep it very short. The Auxiliary Bishop asked uh, the pastor to open up um, time for us to speak about 40 Days for Life. Um, do you believe in prayer? Do you believe the prayer changes things? Yes. Would you consider coming out and praying at the Planned Parenthood Clinic, which is in our backyard, two miles away? You can pray on the sidewalk, you can bring a friend, you can get your steps in, bring your rosary, make it a social time. What I'm asking is that there, out of 7,000 parishioners here, that 500 would come and imagine 500 people peacefully praying the rosary outside of Planned Parenthood with love and smiles on their faces and kindness in their heart. Why would we do that? Well, it's not a protest. It's just prayer and a reparation, public reparation. More than 6 million babies in the United States have been lost to abortion. 6 million couples are living with that, many unhealed. If you think of the message of Fatima and what's going on in Ukraine, she said uh, over a hundred years ago, Russia will spread her errors. What are the errors of Russia? Communism, atheism, and did you know also abortion? Russia is number one for the number of abortions performed. China, number two, and guess who is number three? Right. We are ranked right up there with the communist countries. Um, so I invite you, you can come anytime during Lent. They're open from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, just behind In-N-Out Burger. You can come anytime, bring your rosary. Or what I'd like to see is St. Francis represented there. Some other churches come, Protestant churches occasionally, a few people trickle in. But what, let it be said, that St. Francis is on the map. Let it be said that St. Francis cares about North County and what's going on here, that they want to save lives, that they want to pray and, and love people into the kingdom. Let it be said that St. Francis 
shows up. I, amen? amen? I hope to see you t next Saturday at 9.30 at Planned Parenthood in Vista. Thank you so much. Thank you. extend your arm and blessing. Gracious Lord, you have nourished your people with the body and blood of your Son, that we might have eternal life. Bless now your ministers who have chosen to take the word of God and the bread of life to the members of our body who are unable to be with us because of illness. May the saving ministries they share with the sick lead them to fullness of health. And may the sick know the care of your touch through the ministry of these servants. For we ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you all for your participation in this Holy Eucharist. Let us go with the message of today that our God is still loves us and is merciful, but we need it to work on ourselves. And help others also so that we can walk together towards the promised land. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Direct you, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants in this grace that they abiding in the love of you and the, the neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen. Let us all sing together our sending forth song, Save Your People. <laughs>